wanted to share with you the books that I have read since the last time I did an update. And since I was already filming a video, as you can see behind me, all these wonderful books for women. I just filmed the first video for the Women in History Month. I'll leave that link up below. The first book I want to mention is called The Yellow Bird Sings, and this was by Jennifer Rosner. And I read this for Historathon, which is a historical fiction readathon. And I did vlog about this, so I won't say too much. If you want to see the vlog, the link's up below. But this was about a mother and a daughter from Poland who, at the beginning of this book, were hiding in a barn in World War II. I did rate this 5 out of 5. The story was beautifully written and the use of the yellow bird throughout I thought was uh, genius and very poetic and I loved the story. It was so well written but I have to say it was emotionally wrought. I just have to say that it was emotionally wrought which means it was a really well written book and I'm not in a hurry to read another historical fiction in quite a while. <laughs> and the next three books that I'm going to share are actually fantasy books. So there's two YA fantasy and one adult fantasy. The first one I'm going to share about is the adult book and this is Gods of Jade and Shadow and this was by Silvia Moreno Garcia and I rated this book four out of five. It was one of the best actually that I had read in a while. In this book Hesapia lives with her grandfather. Her mother married a man he did not want her to marry and he the father ended up dying and they didn't have enough money so the mother and Casapia ended up coming back to live with the grandfather and she's basically treated like a servant and has to care for her cousin and her aunts and her grandfather and one day she retaliates against her cousin Martin and she is not allowed to go out with them for a day of fun and the whole family leaves her at home and there has been a chest on her grandfather's bed all this time that no one's allowed to open and she decided in her anger to finally open that box because she was dying of curiosity anyways to see what it was so she opens it and she frees the mayan one of the mayan gods the chest had enclosed his bones in this book, Cassiopeia ends up going across the country with this god of death and he is trying to get back body parts that his twin brother basically hid across the country so that he can take on his brother and take back the underworld from his brother. And I thoroughly enjoyed this read. Felt like the best that I had read in the last couple months in terms of fantasy. I was really welcomed this one. Yeah, I had a good time reading this one. And I loved it because it was an area of the country that I don't haven't read a lot about and I wasn't familiar with Mexico and this was some of the areas of Mexico so it was fun to uh, learn those pieces of history as well as learn some of the countryside. Then we have A Song of Race and Rune and this was by Roseanne A, uh, Roseanne A. Brown. I do believe this was her first book and I rated this four and a half out of five. And I will say I listened to this on audiobook, so I'm not sure that I got the best feel for this because it ended up being interrupted quite a bit. And I listened to the audiobook over a month, and I don't feel that is a totally fair representation of the book. I think if I were to do it again, I would just sit down and read the book, to be honest, and because it was there was too many interruptions. But I did enjoy it that way, so I imagine if you sat down and read this book, it would probably be a 5 out of 5. In the beginning of the book, you meet Malik, who is traveling to Zarnia with his older sister and his younger sister. And a vengeful spirit ends up taking his younger sister, whose name is Nadia, and the spirit makes a deal with Malik that if he kills the princess, then the spirit will return his younger sister, Nadia. The other major character in the book, so you're going back between their point of view, between Malik's point of view, as well as the princess's point of view, and her name is Karina, and she is a daughter of the Sultana who ends up getting murdered, and she decides that she wants to try to do this spell to bring her mother back. Yeah, so Karina decides that she is going to do this magic spell and resurrect her mother, and this is all happening during a festival called the Salstagia. And in this book, Malik ends up becoming one of the participants in the Salstagia uh, competition. And 
because Karina needs to have a king's heart to resurrect her mother, Karina states that whoever wins the competition, she will marry them because she wants to marry them and get basically kill the gentleman to get the heart for to resurrect her mother. And Malik is, ends up in this competition. And of course, he wants to win the competition so he can get close to Karina and kill her and get her young and get his younger sister back. Anyway, it's it's it is a really good read. I would highly recommend this one. I can't wait for the second one to come out, actually. Okay, the next book I'm going to show you was my absolute favorite. It's a five out of five. I could not put this book down to the point where I was doing the things that I had to do in the run of the day. For example, homeschooling my daughter, doing the things around the house that had to be done, etc. And the whole time I was thinking about that book and I was just waiting for any opportunity that I could get to pick up this book. It was so good. This is called Legend Born and this is by Tracy Dion. And this is the first of a series. And this is, like I said, it's a five out of five for sure. At the beginning of this book, we meet Brie, whose mother has died. And she is 16 years old. And she ends up going to a college early. She gets admitted early. And there she meets a boy. And he's part of the legend born. And she has magical powers that are starting to erupt during this time as well. And Brie has a memory surface about the night her mother died in the hospital and she's determined to figure out and solve the mystery behind her mother's death which leads her to get involved with the legendborns who are fighting demons and I love the premise of the story. It turns out that the legendborns are descendants of King Arthur and they are fighting demons and when enough demons are released into the world all the scions of King Arthur and the Round Table awaken so they take over the spirits of the current signs living in today's world and yeah i love the background of the story i thought it was incredible i have never read anything like it and i i cannot wait for the second one to come out five out of five for sure i love it when you find a book you can't put down this is why we read and it had been a couple months since i really read anything i absolutely loved and this reminded me of what that experience is like and i will be a little fussy going forward because of this book which I am grateful for the reminder. This one is titled The Left-Handed Booksellers of London and this is by Garth Nix. In this book we meet Susan who is looking for information for her father and we're introduced to her very quickly in the beginning of the book. She's found in um, Frank's house which is a crime boss and it ends up blowing up and she is saved by Merlin, who ends up being one of the booksellers of London. It turns out there are left-handed and right-handed booksellers and they go back centuries. And they are, one is very intellectual and the other one fights and keeps everybody safe. So this is really bringing in the old world, like old myths and everything. And I have to say this, I rated this three out of five. This sounded amazing. The concept and premise of this book really sounded fantastic. I was so excited to have found it and it was just a fluke that I did. However, it was a bit of a disappointment and I'm still feel disappointed when I think about it. I finished reading the book. However, what I would say about it is the world building was really nice. Like I liked the idea and the premise behind the story even all the way throughout. However, you felt very disconnected from the characters. It was like everything was kind of happening over there. I didn't get drawn into the story. I didn't really care what happened to the characters. And that was a bit disappointing. So I will not be continuing on with this series. It is a YA series. Again, I rated it a 3 out of 5. <laughs> I read A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is from the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Did I get that right? Court of Thorns and Roses. Yes. <laughs> this is the fourth or fifth book. My goodness, I can't even remember. Anyways, in this particular book, we are focusing on Nesta, who is one of the two sisters that was thrown into the cauldron and has become Fae instead of human. And it really focuses on her journey. And I absolutely loved it. I know I listened to many booktubers that were not fond of Nesta. And they weren't looking forward to this telling, but in typical Sarah J. Mass form, it was absolutely 
uh, page turner. So whatever spectrum you fall on the love or hate Sarah J Mass, I couldn't put this book down. I thought about it constantly. Every time I had five or ten minutes, I was picking it up and I couldn't wait to finish it. I think I read it in three days. And this is not a light read. So I read it very quickly because it was so fantastic. And, you know, would I say it's like ugh, some great piece of literature? No, probably not. However, when I can't put a book down and I can't stop thinking about it and I can't wait to finish it, to me, that's a fantastic reading experience. And it actually made me feel a little sad because it reminded me of how much I love reading and how much I hadn't been getting hope my daughter is above thing, making lots of noise. It reminded me what a great reading experience is like and that I hadn't been reading a lot of books I absolutely loved lately because I didn't have this experience. And sometimes that's okay. You read for other reasons. However, I was happy to have a page turner. And for those who are not aware, this is a fantasy series. Now, it says YA, but that's actually shameful. There is nothing YA about this book. At this point in the editing process, I realized that I told you nothing about the book. So I'm filming this right now to stick in and hopefully it's not too shaky. And it's about a month since I read that book. And I mentioned that because my memory for names is really bad. Now, this whole book is about Nesta. At the beginning of the book, uh, Nesta is confronted by her family members, her sister Farah, and she's giving an ultimatum. They don't like how she's living. She's drinking and she's sleeping with everybody. She doesn't come around the family anymore at all. She's not, she's running up huge tabs. She isn't physically taking care of herself. They give her an ultimatum that she has to go and train and, or go to the world of humans. And really for her to go to the human world at this point would be a death sentence. And of course, the person training her is Cassian. And we really get to see Nesta's evolution. And we begin to understand the reason that she is so nasty is because she is terrified of the darkness that's inside of her. The cat's meowing in the background. She is terrified of the darkness inside of her. And she hates herself, not only for not saving her father, but also for what happened when she went into the cauldron. And we get to see her evolution and to see her deal with all the broken pieces of herself and putting those back together. And of course, Cassian loves her for exactly who she is and helps her along with that process. And the other thing I really loved about this book is you got to see Nesta help other people with similar tragic backgrounds. In today's lingo, we would say everybody's suffering from post-traumatic stress and I really loved how she helped the ladies that were in the library that ended up there because of traumatic circumstances. And I loved how they weaved the story of the Valkyries throughout. And these women started to train not only in the ways that Cassian trained them, but from old books and notes that they found about the Valkyries that are no longer in the story. They've all died. They died a warrior's death. And I love that part of the story. Now, this sounds like a love fest, but like I said, it was a page turner. So I'm really happy I read it. My only complaint is that I thought the sex scenes were very graphic and a bit much. And I'm not the only one that said this. You're in one camp or the other. And in the book previous to this one in the series, I forget the exact title, but I found the sex scenes repetitive, like after a while, it just seemed like you're reading the same thing over and over. I get sick of them and I would flip by them. However, in this book, she, the author, she being Sarah J. Maas, uh, got very graphic and to each his own, but I, I didn't want to necessarily read it over and over. There just seemed like it was so many. And it seems to me that should be a genre in and of itself if that's not why I picked up these books. And I will say this because I don't want to go on a rant, but I think it needs to be said. This should absolutely not be in the YA section. Now, I have seen this book in the YA section of local bookstores, and I never said anything because I hadn't necessarily read this one. Uh, in, previous, um, in the previous books, I still didn't think they should be in the YA section. But now that I've read this one, I would really have a lot to say about that. 
And I wonder if those in charge of the local bookstores are not aware of what's happening because the publishers are still labeling it YA. However, you know, middle grade is 8 to 12. So that would mean that YA is 13 and above. And as a mother, if my daughter, and I know everybody says everybody's maturing at a different rate. However, if my daughter picked this up at 13 years old, 14, 15 years old, I would be horrified. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So when this pandemic is over and I'm in a bookstore, I'm definitely saying something to the owners or to the managers of these bookstores. And I think something should change in that respect. There's my rant. Anyway, I did enjoy the book, but I still don't want my 13-year-old daughter reading it, for example, or even my 15-year-old daughter. You get the point. Those are the books I'm going to share in this video for my most recent reads. I'm currently reading A Song of Achilles and loving it. I'm halfway through and I will talk about that in my next update for recent reads. And if there's a book that you're loving right now or have read recently that you loved, please share it down below. I'd love to hear. And if you like the video, of course, hit like and subscribe to see more like this. And I will see you soon with another bookish video. Thanks.